Wei Li. Uh, something about her was interesting. When you say robot, she was like a robot. She didn't know why she fought until uh, we got her with mindset. Mind now she has a purpose. Now she has a purpose. She has a why. And, and, and now you see her smiling. You see her telling Joanna, you're, you're beautiful at the weigh-ins. And, you know, uh, she was fighting because that's what she was told to do. That's what well, she thought Well, if you ask Stan, right, I mean, Joanna is beautiful, though. Oh, for sure. What's going on, Menace? Yo, what up, Stan the Man? How are you today? Pretty good. Not bad. Um, did you see, like, what's... Have you been paying attention to the stock market? Absolutely. This is a pretty wild time right now. I just wish I had more money so I could buy more stocks this low. It's been wild times for a very long time. Well, since somebody became president. What did you just get, like an update that told you about Bitcoin? Yeah, so Bitcoin dropped crazy, right? It was around like... 35. I bought it at 32, right? I was like, all right, I'm gonna throw 500 dollars at this thing. It's at 32, it was bounced back up to 70. And I'm fucking, I'll just double my money. Sick. I buy it at 32. Later that day, it goes down to like 30. I'm like, what? Okay. It's at twenty-one thousand dollars right now. So my concern with Bitcoin, how everyone's like, oh no, it's unregulated. It's unregulated. What? We just saw what they did with fucking COVID and that whole business and how they could, you know, do whatever they want, pretty much. What company makes the most popular iPhone or the most popular phone is an iPhone, right? Everyone has iPhones. You're telling me they don't have complete control over us with these phones and with the technology and with everything. There's no... Here's... There's I no, would imagine... Th- th- I would imagine no there are market. some big shots that have big money in Bitcoin, that's not going to just be nothing. You know what I mean? What what do you mean, big shots? What big shots? Bro, big shots. Outside of the government? I don't think, does Nancy Pelosi have Bitcoin? Oh my God, hold on. Yeah, I'm going to bleep some of these things that I'm saying out too. So we got censored for posting a fact about Nancy Pelosi's husband. Like, I got a strike on Instagram because I shared about her husband getting a DUI and getting away with it. Like, the charges being dropped. Wow. And it was a true, it's a true thing. Like, you can check it out. It's a true thing. We'll see long term, no charges or anything's going to come of it. But yeah. Now, did you get a check on Twitter for posting the same thing? I didn't post the same thing there. I just posted it on Instagram. Why would you post it on Twitter? Because what do you mean? Why would I post it on Twitter? I just shared. Because you can put whatever you want on Twitter now and that will stick. I don't think you can. And that whole thing is a whole thing too. Elon, I told you, Elon just did that for the cloud. Did he actually buy it or he just. I, I told you, Elon was just buying. When you asked me what's the deal with Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, I told you, Elon Musk is yes. involved. Elon Musk is the third guy. He was hooking up with Amber Heard and the whole time Amber Heard's probably talking about this guy Johnny and oh Johnny used to eat those cookies and oh Johnny used to smoke like that you know like oh you smoked weed on Joe Rogan Johnny smokes weed like she probably wouldn't shut the shut the fuck up about Johnny Depp that Elon Musk was like oh they're in the news right now what could I do that's bigger buying Twitter but did he buy it now the trial's over and Elon was just talking the other day he put out a few things like oh I'll stop the sale unless this happens oh I'll stop the sale if this is the case. oh I'll stop the sale now he found something that he can put out there like oh I'll stop the sale unless you give me this and they're not giving it to him so the sale is going to be stopped most likely he's Do you know what he's and what he a, wants he, for for bot information he's saying that he wants Twitter's bot information so yeah, but can't he? But here's can't he buy a majority and be like, I want it. I own this thing. Amber yeah. Heard and Johnny Depp is done. It's out of the news. I feel like I feel like uh, this saddens you. What saddens me? That it's done. No, you were getting a real kick out of this. 
a little kick. You loved the whole thing. Loved you were sending me videos on like the day, like, yo, look what she said. Yeah, I did. I enjoyed it very much because it would be in the courtroom like that. He imagine. Have you ever had a bad breakup? Or a bad fight with a girlfriend? Sure. Where you said fucked up shit. Right. Even if it was like, you fucking bitch, or you stupid whore, you know what I mean? Or you know what you are, and you come up with like some funny wordplay. For like, oh, sure. I love her to laugh about, you know. It was literally that. Like I told you, I, I would send you the things, like the one thing. And then, have you ever been in court ever? Or seen even court proceedings where it's like a situation where, yeah, you probably, no one's been in that situation most likely. But they have pages of the text messages and her lawyer reads out what he said and then goes, can you repeat that? Can you repeat online, whatever, whatever, what you said right there? And Johnny Depp would go, you want me to read this? And they'd be like, <laughs> and he'd be like, yeah. And then he'd be like, is the slippery whore that I used to give my jizz still there? And he'd be like, can you read that one more time? And the whole courtroom would like gasp. And the judge would be like, you don't need to read it again, you know? Or there were other times where he would read whatever it was twice, you know what I mean? And it was just things like that. Like, I can't, like, like I'm going to fuck her dead corpse and just stupid shit like that, you know? Um, but listen, if we're being honest, so right, he lost the Pirates of the Caribbean, the Disney gig. Giant Depp's still chilling, right? Yeah. There's so many, no, there's so many producers that like, yo, Giant Depp would be perfect for, you know what I mean? Like, right? What do you mean? A hundred percent. Yeah. I would like a lot of people say like, because he was suing her for like fucking up his career, right? Um, that's a big, Slander. that's a big bag though. You know what really, the fact that this got like, yo, you can watch it any second, anytime, anywhere, but that fucking, that rich dude trial. Ghislaine? Can't see shit. Yeah, they gave us nothing. Yo, people were hype on that. Like, yo, can't wait to see this one. Well, that's also part of it, too. That's why I oh, think Like I was saying, when you have a ton of money, certain things go your way, dude. So, like, if people, a big, some dudes got some big money in Bitcoin, Bitcoin got to bounce back. Yes, but does, like I said, does NP, won't even say her name because apparently they'll flag us, does she have money in Bitcoin? Because if she don't have money in Bitcoin, then I don't have a... a a good faith in like the long standing of Bitcoin. If the government, for real, if the government, the U.S. government, is not behind Bitcoin, and that's unfortunate so because we're like, Bitcoin, it might become the, it might become a if if a country signs on to it. Everyone who says that, like, oh, that's what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin's, you know, it unregulated. Maybe it is short term or. So, uh, just le less than a bit. You know what? Maybe we save this conversation a little bit for either Jesse Jansen or uh, our homie, the Funk. Funk. Who's the Funk? Ben Askren? Ben Askren. Big, big crypto guys. Oh, for sure. But even right now. Dude, how you doing? Like, well, even that. They're like, this, like, I'm just putting all my money in. That you were like, let's open this episode up talking about Bitcoin. We should be like, oh, UFC 275. Amazing. You know. Sorry. It's what we were talking about before we went live. Yeah. There's some good stuff in there. It's dropping, though. The economy, everything. It's fucked. But that's also why I think. I mean, who? I don't know what the explanation would be of why Bitcoin's dropping. But. I don't well, the whole economy. You, you, I think it's in tandem. Is that the the word? I guess I don't see good long long term anything. Okay. Testing. We're already live, big dog. We rolling. Let's roll. We are rolling. What's going on, That's Coach? What's going on? How are you, brother? 
Man, it was a it was a great weekend. Oh, absolutely! You, right or what? Three and zero, four and zero. How many guys do you have in that card? Uh, we worked. Uh, we worked with Wei Lee and Yuri. So Wei Lee in the last camp, we didn't we didn't get to work with her in this camp. Um, she was planning on coming out, but then when the fight got put in Singapore, it was about eight weeks out. And have you ever been to Singapore? Man, it takes about two weeks to recover from that. Yeah, from the jet I, lag, so cool. and, yeah. and, and it would have been. It just didn't make sense. So they went to Thailand and, and a great gym there as well. Bank, bank they were with Hickman Brothers, right? The Hickman Brothers, right? Yeah, and, I wrestled with George in college. Oh, awesome! Yeah, I've met George a long time ago in uh, in North Carolina. Yes, I'm sorry, in Georgia, but I know he's from North Carolina. Yes. About 2011, right before I started coming to Brazil, I met him with um, Jukau, Juan Jukau. So, but how's Eric, everything going? Eric Albaracin, welcome back to the show. It's good to see you, Coach. All the way in Brazil, what are you doing there? You've been there for a minute, no? Man, I'm. Uh, yeah, we're training uh, Leandro Ego. Leandro Alter Eagle's got a huge fight. He's in the Grand Prix Bellator tournament. Million dollars on the line. He's got to get through the Italian gangster first, Danny Sabatello. Uh, so, you know, we, we've we been down here putting a camp together for him. Uh, brought in Boris, the virus sensation. If you guys have seen that um, that guillotine defense where he does a backflip to get out. I know it was like, it was a viral video. Um, he's in a guillotine, he turns his, and he does a backflip to get out. But anyway. We brought him down here as a 2016 Olympian, and uh, Boris, the, the, he's right here. What's up? Boris, oh, the barbarian, going? Bulgarian, 2016 okay. Olympian, Damn. wrestler. But even, oh, why, what's going on? Is, is Brazilians not able to travel here right now, or why is Leandro not at fight ready? Why are you in Brazil? I've always, I've been coming to Brazil for 11 years. Okay. So, that you know, it's always been fight ready in the Pitbull Brothers for me. It was the Pitbull Brothers, and it was Brazil before it was fight ready. Okay, so and you're just so, on the road um, doing the same thing, just taking it on the road for right now. I've been on the road for eleven years. I've been chasing greatness, baby. Wouldn't when change potential. Well, your your body won't let you sleep until you succeed, and, and I got goals as a coach. I want ten ten world titles. You know, and uh, one in every weight class. That's the goal. I already got 25, 35, 45, 55. Now we got a piece of 205. You know, Wei Lee gets that title shot again against Carla. That'll be another one. You know, I feel so like he, she's the robot, dude. Wei Lee. Who's that? Wei Lee. I just like, I'm like, dude, I don't even, she's like a legit machine, I feel. She is, I'll tell you what. When I trained her, wow. When we trained her, my, uh, when we trained her at Fire Ready, she was the best athlete we've ever worked with, male or female. It was amazing. Like, the six-pack she has is, like, because women naturally have more body fat. just just genetics. It's just how they're made. She is fucking, like, the leanest chick I've ever seen, I think. Yeah, she gets... Uh, She's got good genes, I can tell you that. She she's strong, and she the be, the biggest thing with her is she learns. She's like a sponge. Well, she now, because in my head, chat like I can totally wrong. Or Russia, like when you're born, like you will be a soccer player, you will be a gymnast, you will, like I feel like when she was born, like you're gonna be a fighter. Well, she's uh, I think she started. I want to say Kung Fu at a young age, five or six. Then she start, got into Sanda. And I, and I think she stopped Sanda at a certain age, and she was doing all kinds of odd jobs. And then she met a uh, Kai, who's her coach, head coach, and he thought that she, he, she would do good in MMA, and he invested everything into her. And he was right. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think she's about to make history and become champ again. Yeah. That's a tough fight for Carla. Yeah, it is because <laughs> she tra- she's she's a good wrestler, uh, and you know uh, the fact that she lost because of two takedowns against Rose. 
um, in that fourth and fifth round, I just made it. I just made it even make her want to evolve even more. Um, it's something about these these athletes from from countries of being the first. Like it's not about wins or losses. It's about you know they have a whole country behind them and. and you know, stuff like what she does and what Yuri did, that that can inspire an entire nation. The way he won in that fight, the way she won, the way she became the first UFC champion from China, the way Yuri just did it, you know, the way he did it, that inspires generations. Um, and that, that's kind of what I'm attracted to is, uh, you know, people that are trying to make history because I'm trying to make history. We're trying. It's about legacy, um, and you know, we're. Uh, I'm trying to conquer something that's never been conquered. So I, I, I always liked um, somehow. I mean, the Henry, greatest combat athlete of all time, Patricia Pitbull. You know, the Bellator go his brother, but now we're the first brothers in history, Patricia and Patricky, to be the first to ever brothers to simultaneously have world titles at the same time. I mean, these are the things we're kit chasing. In the beginning, it was, I just wanted a world title, but now it's about making history. And and what intrigues me more is these people from other countries that, that, that can inspire a whole nation behind them. You know, Boris is from Bulgaria over here. Uh, you know, uh, Mark Madsen's from Denmark. I have the Sultan of Swat from Iran. So there's, uh, you know, some Indians that are going to come train with us. And uh, that kind of, that, that is for, uh, the, I don't know, the the, the, the never quit attitude, is it, it hits harder for them. I mean, look at When you get these guys fight. from other countries, they're usually have a, a strong wrestling background and you're getting guys that, I want that wrestling background. So that's where they, they come to you, right? Wouldn't you say? Uh, ideally, but, you know, Yuri, did it, Yuri came to us because he didn't have any wrestling. Right. No, no, I what I'm saying say is he didn't have any wrestling, wrestlers but. come to you because, listen, we are on the same field here. Teach me everything else. And then people that have it all figured out, Minus they can use work on the wrestling, come to you like, yo, this is the last little tweak I need for my end game. And to tell you the truth, most of everybody just needs the wrestling. Uh, especially, the, I mean, the big the, the guys that have already been champions, like Figueredo, you know, um, you know, he came to us. He just needed some, some strategy and, and a better mindset. We put him in with uh, a mindset mic. Um, same with Wei Lee. We use Mindset Mike. Wei Lee, uh, something about her was interesting. When you say robot, she was like a robot. She didn't know why she fought until uh, we got her with Mindset Mike. Now she has a purpose. Now she has a purpose. She has a why. And, and, and now you see her smiling. You see her telling Joanna, you're, you're beautiful at the lands. And, you know, uh, she was fighting because that's what she was told to do. That's what well, she thought Well, if you she ask Stan, right, I mean, Joanna is beautiful, though. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I think she's a uh, beauty and the beast all mixed in one, you know? The boogie You know boogie. what's wild? When she first came to the UFC, she looked like Skeletor, just like, <sighs> and it was like, Ugh. And then, like, over, like, she became a champion. She became, like, fucking gorgeous. Like, what the hell? <laughs> Well, no, her when she's cutting weight, when she's cutting weight, that's how she looks. She looks like Skeletor when she's cutting weight. But even sure. one thing you said that me and Menace actually were talking about earlier today is the country. That video, you saw that video of Jerry coming home to the Czech Republic yeah. and a fucking parade. Like, love it. This is this is this is the why. Yeah. The why, uh, why he definitely doing? got some tail after that shit, right? From, uh, when, when it's about when people are doing it for money, it's something you can't control. You are a wrestler, you know. I mean, state titles and all American status, you know, going to the Olympics. Right. Never There's no money, money in it. You, you can't even accept money. If you accept money, you're banned. You're right. suspended. So it was never about money, and that's what made wrestlers great. Uh, yeah. 
try to get a Brazilian to wrestle and they're like, how much they paying you? They, I'm like, you got to pay to wrestle. That, to, and I've said it, I've said it time like, and time again. One of the reasons why I retired is because those losses, when I got those three split decisions in a row, it just took me so far away from title contention. And I was like, dude, I don't, you know, I mean, I'm going to run out of gas before the two years. It's going to take me even get in the discussion again. And you know what? I know what that's about. Uh, I mean, Triple C knows what that's about. That's why he, uh, when he fought Demetrius Johnson, I think he made 40 and 40 for the title. And he knew if he didn't, they were like, well, if you don't accept this fight, we'll give it to Benavidez. And then after Benavidez came Pettis, and after Pettis came someone else. And he would have waited about two years to get, to get the fight. And then he said, you know what? It's not about money. It's about my legacy. And I'm going to take this fight now. And he did. And the rest is history. You know, he became Triple C. And hopefully this year he's going to come C4. Oh, yeah. The thing I say it all the time to Menace, the thing which with Henry, like almost breaks my heart as a fan. Give him Conor McGregor. Give him Volkanovski. I want to see this shit. Can this guy become a three-weight world champion, a four, you know, be, he is the most decorated combat sports a, sports athlete on paper. Let him add to it. You know what I mean? Like, let him get another accolade. Or Volkanovski gets a win against a credible opponent. Or Conor McGregor gets a good comeback fight. What, uh, I agree. Eric, I agree. Eric, what is the, um, the UFC doesn't want to pay him what he's worth? Um, I mean, when he retired, I think that was part of it. But it was more like... Like I mentioned wrestlers before, like you win an NCAA title, if you're not going to the Olympics, you retire and you use all the the characteristics and the, uh, everything you built and determination to become a champion in wrestling. You, you transfer that, you transition that into your, your next career. He did everything he set out to do. I, you know, I remember when he was a sophomore in high school, we, we wrote down on a piece of paper and we had it up on the door you know, he had Olympic champion. He had UFC champion. He had being a father. Um, at that point, he had done the first two. And being a father was something he, had, he hadn't done yet. And, uh, and he had been number one with a bullseye on his back since he was 11, 12 years old. He needed a break. They're not going to pay him to stay. You use all, all the knowledge and all the hype that you got from being the greatest combat athlete all the time. And... Start a podcast, go on, you know, with Mike Tyson, do triple C in the schmo, get into real estate, use what you got from MMA and wrestling to, to become successful uh, and then on the other side of business. And that's what he's did. That's what he did. Um, but I always thought, man, he's got a lottery ticket in his pocket. And when that baby America comes, America, the beautiful, you know, he's going to think, man, I got a lottery ticket. It might be time to cash this in before one of these numbers disappear, you know? And uh, I think the two years is, it's been two years and I think he's got that itch again. So he put himself back in the, uh, he has, he's always had the itch if they would have gave him what he's worth. I mean, like you said, why not give him what he's worth? He's the greatest combat athlete of all time on paper. The only Olympic and two time division champ. I mean, give him what the guy's worth. Let's let's put him up against the Conor McGregor's. The what's, what's, that what's, what's that number? What's that? What's that number that he wants? Man, I couldn't tell you. I uh, I know it's. Oh, I, I would have to say in the range of between one and two, <laughs> somewhere in there. No, one to two million. They were giving Ronda three. Exactly. Bro, they're, dis exactly. they, but they're disrespecting Henry. But here's even, I've talked to you a little bit, a bit about, uh, about it, and I spoke to Ali about it. The cringe, you know, you put out this character, and it's like, oh, I like what he's doing. Oh, it annoys me. I think he annoyed Dana White and, like, Hunter. Like, you know how, like, you want engagement from fans. Whether they like you or they hate what you're doing, they kind of didn't like what he was doing. They didn't like the cringe, and then he was like, peace out, I'm out. So they were like, all right. We're not, we're not, almost like we're not giving in to you. We're not giving you, we're not meeting your demands. You could say what you want. That's why every time they were like, Dana, what's up with Henry Cejudo? His, 
Immediately, Henry Cejudo's retired. Immediately would shoot it down. But it's constantly trying to get Khabib to come out. Like, ah, maybe. Well, I, you know what? I don't. I can tell you this: I didn't know he was going to retire in the cage. So if I didn't know, I was surprised. Imagine Dana's, yeah, you know, Dana White, at, you know, and uh, so uh, I, I think it's related to that. I, I could be wrong, but I think it's related to doing in the cage you know i know henry's to tell you the truth henry ever since i've known him it was always something it was going to be short it was going to be 10 you i'm getting 10 fights and i'm done it was never it was always to conquer something that's never been conquered and, and then move on to the next so uh the fact that he got way more than 10 fights and he you know won two weight classes and beat the greatest you know, so the only uh, thing that makes sense to him right now is a third title at a different weight. That's yeah, I think uh, I think there's a grudge there. Maybe they don't. They're mad at him retiring in the cage without with no notice. But uh, you know, they can get. It's about time to get over that. I think. Uh, really? Yeah. Something weird happened. Yeah, something – they got crossed up in their signals or something. That's kind of how – I'm not Henry Cejudo, but they were just like, really? Oh, had no idea. This... Again, well, I'm not Henry. I can tell but... you that they think – I can tell you they thought it was about money. Um, and like I said, it was, he didn't retire and like, oh, bring me back in money. I think that was the immediate reaction. And I think that that's what kind of – Oh, you think you can trick us into doing that? You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, I'm telling you, it was not that. So if they give Henry Volkanovski $2 million, he's signing tomorrow. If they do that, the day after the fight, you'll be calling Henry Cejudo C4. Yeah. And that's it. Heck yeah, you will. Yeah. <laughs> if I know Henry, I think, I think yes. When I spoke to Ali, Ali said the meeting with the UFC went well. So we're definitely going to see Henry back in a big fight before the end of the year. I don't know if it's going to be Al Jermaine or could be Volkanovski. Yeah, but... I, I think um, for some reason they won't, uh, you know, the 145 pound, they want him to get some fights in. So why not? Why not take out Al Jermaine Stone? Why not go on the, go back yeah, there? Are you, yeah, but sometimes they fight. want the guy to have fights at that weight class that he's going for the True, belt. But another coming back and get, getting that title again should put him right in the mix. And, for sure. Triple, Triple C ain't fighting to nothing. Ain't, ain't fighting for anything but, but gold. That's yeah. it. So from never, talking know, about uh, just GSP, GSP didn't come back and fight for you know a warm up fight after six seven years or however yeah. long it was. So from one of the best to ever do it in Henry Cejudo to another one of the goats, you had John Jones under your your guys' watchful eye as well recently. What was going on there? Is he going to be coming back to fight ready, or was he just stopping in for that one time? No, he came more than once, um, and. From what I understand, he'll be coming back. He's, he loved it out there. Uh, you know, 10 years, anywhere you say 10 years, kind of like you need a, you can say you need a break from something. Break and For sure. you know, expand. Something uh, different. Open mind. So I think that's what we gave him. Um, not, those guys are great down there. They obviously, you know, helped build the greatest uh, pound for pound fighter in John Jones. So um, I just think we added a, a another wrinkle to him and, and just, you know, I could tell that he hadn't wrestled in a long time. I know that much. Uh, so we brought in some of the best wrestlers. We brought in uh, uh, Zahid Valencia. Oh, yeah, wow. Know, What's Zahid uh, walk around at? Two and change? Yeah, he fights at 185, so he's about 205, I would say. Okay. And then we also brought, we had uh, Jaden Cox. Yeah. Oh, I did see that. I did see. Uh, he, so, was, John Jones is pretty humble working with uh, Cox. Oh yeah, I mean you can't, you know, you can't come take off that many years of wrestling and then go against oh, the sir. an active world champion. It's like, I mean, that's why I always think. Man, it looks like an E and I wrestle, huh? 
Exactly. I mean, that's you don't even got to be an active world champion. Tyrone Woodley versus Jake Paul. You just got to train, you know, uh, one sport the whole time, and you're uh, you take off six months of wrestling. Yeah. You know, you step back on the mat against someone active, it's going to be a little bit, it's tough. To Not back. only technically, tech, technique wise, cardio wise, right? You can, there's, in my head, there's different types of cardio. There's like running cardio, swimming cardio, like striking cardio, and then there's wrestling cardio. And so, and wait. You could be amazing at one, and it doesn't carry over. Doesn't where where other. you just stacked all of those? For me, I've done all of those. Wrestling cardio is the hardest, like the best one to have. The hardest one, the one that when you're in wrestling shape, your body's the most well conditioned to go do anything. Well, the thing is about yeah. wrestling cardio is if you take a break, the other guy is gonna. You, I mean, unless you melt that guy, that's the only way you can get a break is if you melt your opponent. True, <laughs> true. I remember. Uh... I was in basic training in the military. And, you know, in basic training, you're running every freaking day, 4.30 in the morning, PT. And, you know, and uh, and after basic training, I came back uh, to Fort Carson in Colorado Springs, and I entered a wrestling tournament. And here I am. I broke all the records for the two-mile run uh, for my battalion. I'm in the greatest shape, running shape, I thought. Didn't wrestle. And to the wrestling tournament, I lasted like two minutes before I was, you know, ha having a heart attack. So, of course, it was in Colorado Springs at elevation. But either way, man, you're right. There's no uh, there's no other shape than you could be in the marathon shape and you're still not in wrestling shape. And I've been in awesome wrestling shape and then tried swimming, too. And it's like, yo. Yeah, it's it's, it's all comfort zone. Right. It's all within the comfort zone. Even if you know a, a wrestler does boxing, his arms get tired. You know, uh, right up if he's uh, just starting out. Yep. Oh, for sure. And then the same way, like military training is that high level of a wrestler. You know, that high level of wrestling training. You're calloused, as Menace always says, to just you go. You can go. You can always go, you know, you always have cardio, you always have that go in you and just every aspect of life. But we'll let you get out of here, Coach. But before we let you go, we know you're in Brazil. What are you, hanging out with Paulo Costa over there? Paulo's in, I think he's in Florianopolis. So, no, I'm uh, hanging out with the Pitbull Buzz, DeAndre Pitbull. He's fighting June 24th. And uh, and then, you know, Patricky Pitbull, he's defending his title. So I actually got three fighters on June 24th fighting. Uh, and then July 22nd, Patrick's defending this title. So I've been down here for a minute. I haven't been able to get to Figueredo or Paulo. I've been inviting them here because I can only, you know, be one place at the same time. So, right. I, I mean, I, the plan, I, I wish, I wish I was, I went to Singapore. I was so close to going. And then Salvatello started talking shit on, on Leandro. And I was like, man, I can't leave. I got to get Leandro ready. I got, we got to train the wrestling. And so, you know, we've been training Leandro to, to, to whip Danny Sabatello, the guy's one of the best uh, trash talkers in the game right now. And uh, he, he kind of motivated me not to go. And I was like, you know what? I had been sending videos and speaking with them uh, from Brazil. And I was, they were, they were training in Thailand and, uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to stay here and do their whole camp here in Brazil. And, you know, you know, trust that those guys are going to go out there and do their job. And they did exactly that. Yang Wei Lee stamped another shot at a world title. And Yuri became, uh, you know, the first Czech in UFC history to win it all. So, you know, China, Ukraine, I mean, Ukraine, Czechoslovakia, <laughs> my bad. And, uh, you know, worldwide now, we're trying to get Ukrainians. We, uh, I've invited some Ukrainians here to Brazil. You know, those guys Dudes are, are tough. Dudes are tough. Man, they are. And you know what? They're going through a crisis right now. I can imagine what they're going through. I was in Ukraine actually last year watching Victoria Anthony wrestle in the tournament. Made a lot of friends out there. And, um, you know, they're going through that horrible situation right now. 
And uh, I've already invited some of them to train. If any way we can help them out, they can't get to the U.S. Brazil's no visa for them. They're welcome to come here and train. And I've been, you know, planning on bringing some Ukrainians out here to train and, uh, you know, and help them out. They're valiant and they're brave, but that doesn't mean they're not worthy of our support. Oh, for sure. And coach, we we love having you as always. We back up podcasting now, so I'll be in touch. We'll get you on again soon. We'll make this a recurrent thing like we always plan. Yeah, for sure. Hey, and Stan, you look like you lost some weight. Oh, for sure. I you dropped like good. forty pounds. Yeah, I'm on my way. Dang, I was gonna say. Okay, good job. Keep it up. Menace Two is back on his grind, trying to get back in shape. Yeah. Let's go, one forty-five, baby. Wow. <laughs> Long gone. All right, Coach. Thank you again. Safe oh, travels. Man. Safe Good travels. Yeah. Yeah. Hang up on us, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like how we salute people. See ya. You like how Is what? Is Chris Quick still on the line? Yeah, you like how we what? <laughs> we were like, see ya. Salute. But he's Captain. Captain America, right? Yeah, he was a captain in the Army, so... Oh, was he? Yeah. We'll go real quick. We'll go Joanna retiring. Oof. Oof. You know. Did, uh, do you think anyone saw that coming? We'd have to ask her team. But you know what was tough for me about it was just, yeah, did she have it planned? And just it wasn't a good night at all for her, you know? Yeah. Like it if it went through like a split decision, like, all right. Yeah, like it wasn't good in the first she round. Got like almost flatline essentially. What second round, third round? Yeah, which is tough. Um, and then, but the, the, I think a lot of fighters, right? When they and I've heard it talked about before, like when retirement's on the horizon, and that's why some fighters don't announce it because if someone's kind of thinking about retiring, like, oh, this dude isn't fully in it. It's like a mental. It was one of those, as soon as the fight ended, she started taking her gloves off. As soon as she got up, she started taking her gloves off. And I was like... Which is tough, because, I mean, if it wasn't already planned, you're, like, emotional in a loss. You know? Oh, I'm just kidding. Two weeks later, I was just kidding. I just was upset. Maybe she had in her head, if I lose one more time, or if I ever get knocked out. Well, the thing is, is, right, she can't... Win the title at 25. She and she essentially can't win the title at 15. So what am I doing here? Yeah. She's right. She, she's, she's one of those, I feel. Oh, 100 percent Losing that fight, she's stuck at number three. Oh, you know who I wanted to ask um Eric Alvarasin about? I wanted to ask about Tracy Cortez. Oh. Because I love Tracy Cortez. He's been there for a minute. I've been like talking to him back and forth on Instagram, and he's been. There I was for... gonna go there, like, yo, so traveling a lot. Like, what's the girl scene for you? I don't know what he did. I don't know if he has a lady or if he's married. I don't think I've ever asked him that. Yeah, I don't think he has kids. You gotta go there next time with him. I was about to. I was like, ah. yeah. he might not think we're. I don't know. Or no, like, he, no. love he fucking loves us. What do you mean? He's like our boy. Like Lombard's our boy. Yeah, hundred percent. Like if we ever went to Arizona when he's there. Or if we went to Brazil right now. Yeah, but me and you are delinquents. Like, what do you mean you guys are, like, going to bed and training in tomorrow? We're trying to <laughs> move us step out. Oh, you're saying, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, we partied with him, remember? Yeah, but that's after a victory. Okay. So he's like... That's you... prob- in my head, that's probably, like, what the, the fuck, extent of What the fuck did you guys win today? We went training, the food was good at dinner, we're fucking celebrating, we're going yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, we're here. Yeah. yeah. We're celebrating being here. But UFC, uh-huh. yeah, 275 was a good card. And yeah, it was good seeing you, man. Somebody in my college wrestling group said it, and I was like, wow. I think I agree with that. Is 205 the weakest be? weight class? What did they the- say? 205 is the weakest weight class in the, in the UFC. Um, I saw a lot of people saying that Glover and Jiri both had off nights. I disagree with that. I think Jiri was Jiri and Glover was Glover. The Glover that we've seen the last... How are they... Like, I think DC or Anthony Smith definitely said it. A couple people said it. How did Glover have an off night? He looked identical to how he looked in the last, like, four fights. Right. 
And then Anthony Smith actually said something like, oh, no, the Glover that I fought, like, when he got my back and got on top of me, I couldn't get up. And I was like, your statement pretty much just said Jerry's better than me on the ground somehow. (laughs) You know? Like, he wrote, like, I'm a high-level jiu-jitsu guy, and I couldn't, you know, get Glover off of me. Jerry has freakish strength. Jerry was able to out, you know? Yeah, that day looks like he's fucking... Weird, weirdly like wiry, retarded, you know what I mean? Like Glover had him mounted and was beating his face in at times, and, yeah, and he was able to absorb it or scramble out. You know what I mean? I don't think either one of them is, has he come out and like given a statement like what's going on with his hair? Is that like some monk shit or just his hairdo? The only statement that I've heard him give is people were like, Oh, you shortened it, and he was like, Yeah, motherfucker almost caught me in a guillotine, couldn't get out. So that's why he like made it smaller just to get out of guillotines. Um, so is there like a, is there a religious thing behind it, or just or like a spiritual, or just just hairdo? He's just, like, yo, I look sick. Just, like he looks in the mirror, and goes, dude, I look fucking awesome. Yeah, thinks he looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but his whole get up. That was the move to have not cut my hair and then made a Jerry Glover bet with somebody. And today I could have I could have Jerry hair. <laughs> oh wow, that would be for one episode. That would have been sick. Oh my god, though, you know it would have been funny too. Is I would have bet Glover, and Glover was winning on the scorecards, was about to win, was thirty seconds away. So that's where we'll even end it. We'll talk fight IQ. You've done it too. Did you did you do any gambling on, on the past card? Yeah, terribly. I did terrible. All the fights were fucking. It was an off night. But even, like, fight IQ. I fought when I was younger. Terrible fight IQ. I've seen you fight with terrible fight IQ. One of my favorite videos is, forget what fight it is, but, like, every time you go back to the corner and Henry's like, you do the spinning kick and you, or something, and you go, yeah, and he goes, stop fucking. Like, he just is yelling at you every time you come back to the corner. You know? No, it was Keith against uh, Grice. No, it was Henry. It was one, it was my, it's one of my, I gotta watch what fight it is. I think it's um, Elkins. Maybe. Every time you come back to the corner. It took me down, maybe. Henry's like, stop the fucking jumping shit. What are you doing? And then you say, like, he'll ask you a question, like a rhetorical question, and you answer it. You know, like every time. <laughs> like, what are you doing in there? And you'll answer the question. Then he'll be like, stop That was probably doing. one of the worst fought fights, right? Against the Elkins. Yeah, just you had an off night. You know what I mean? But so Valentina was low fight IQ on Saturday, but then picked it up the third, fourth, and fifth, was like, and then even at one moment I was texting with my one friend, Space Monkey, and I was like, if Valentina does lose tonight, she deserves to lose. Mm. Because she was fighting with the lowest fight IQ I've ever seen from her. You know what I mean? She She tied Ronda Rousey for the most female title defenses? Yeah, but like that fight, and I saw people complaining about the scorecards and shit, that fight wasn't close. That fight was, if you're scoring damage... It was all Valentina. You know, the other girl barely did anything. She landed like one elbow in the first round. And she almost choked her? What's almost choked her? Chin to chin, right? Was no. never was never under her chin. Never under it, but never, never under her chin. At one point at what maybe one point had this across her chin, across her face, but Valentina was fighting it. And then Valent it was Valentina damage versus Valentina. Throwing a combination, clinching with her, getting taken down, and then getting fucked up. And then she did this in the first round. In the second round, I was like, damn, what the fuck is she doing tonight? And then Glover, in the fifth round of the Jerry fight, he knocked Jerry out. He had Jerry jelly-legged, dancing around the cage for like two minutes. And he kept trying to take him down with double legs. And Jerry was defending. He would rock him and then drop and change levels and try for a double leg that Jerry would clear his head and defend. And then he even... The the grappling exchange that ended the fight, Glover engaged that. Glover yeah. rocked him with a punch and then made that grappling exchange happen. Yeah, but it's tough, right? I mean, it's high tough. level, yeah, high oh level jujitsu. Like this guy's got a chance to clip me. I know I'm a little older now. Yeah. Well, no, you know, it was what was winning him the fight. If anything, kudos, right. so kudos just stick to what's winning, you know. Kudos to Jerry for pulling that out, but it was like Glover at the same time. Like if you watched it, it was you. You agree? He had Jerry. He landed the best punch of the fight. 
big right hand and had Jiri on out on his feet, and then he yeah. tried to take him down, or even took him down. But great night of fights. Well, maybe he was like, "Yo, easy takedown. This guy can't stand." Oh, for I'll lay on him. No, I told Victor. you. I think he might have got one double leg. The only takedowns Glover was getting was when he single legged and skied it. Yeah. Everything else, Jerry defended. Take that. Oh, it's, it's take a great down. takedown. It's great. It's one of my we used to be one of my money takedowns. One of the only things I could wow. hit. But I got snared. Oh, uh, no, I don't think I, I don't think I, if I ever took you down, I took you down with where you held someone's behind me. Well, I was jumping geek. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say, yeah. If you had a guillotine and I like sc- want to scramble off of a guillotine. Uh it was two weeks ago, right? That that uh, Felice Herring retired too. Yeah, yeah, but she was on a little bit of a skid, right? On a skid, and it hasn't fought in a couple years. And then even I heard we she, she and that, that fight she got who worked right. You shoot that shot, or who would be the friend that could get us Felice Herring? Is she friends with like Jessica Penny or something? I think so. Because I heard, uh, what's her name? Maybe Carla. Name? I heard what's her name makes a lot of money on fucking feet picks. Man. But how long does that last? I mean, I think people are probably buying it, right? Because she is this. And think about how many celebrities are like, yo, I would. Hold on. Feet picks. And I build my feet pick audience. Boom. I let a titty out. And I build my titty audience. Boom. I show my pussy. My badge. Boom. (laughs) You know, quick 13 what? second clip of me fucking my boyfriend. Honey, I don't want to do it. Do you want to look at, and then she shows you the fucking, the thing. Yeah, I'm, but once that is done, then that's it. Like right? That, yeah, like that's something I was talking about too. But again, the only reason why people want to see this potentially is because she's this fighter. Now she's not the fighter anymore, right? Or you're saying she can still. It's like me doing some shit. Like, yo, you're still aware of that. Yeah, could still. What do you mean? There's girls who Mm -hmm. are just attractive. You know what I mean? Okay. Felice Herring's not the worst looking chick. Okay. And what if she has glamorous feet? What if in the background of her feet pick, there's a vagina? You know, like you get one of those type of shots. She can make some money there. (laughs) You're going to send her ideas? (laughs) <laughs> oh, and then even just another stupid thought. We'll wrap on this. I had one theory, and now my first, I told my little cousin George, I was like, do you know what your homework assignment is? You're going to look up women with breast implants. So I'm fighting in the UFC. I got my tits done. What is their record post-boob job? Oof. Yeah. So Ramona Pascal, I think is her name, she fought on the undercard of UFC 275. She was the second fight. Just got a boob job. Yeah, uh, like Mexican chick, right? Yeah, just got a Spanish boob job. Chick? Yeah, but I, I, we were like, oh man. She I ended wonder. that. She like smoked that, or she like knocked she the girl knocked out, out that yeah, Asian chick. Knocked the girl out cold. Yeah, like fucking blasted her. But that's what had me going with the conversation. And then I saw that video. I think I sent to you of Joanna walking and saying, "I'm the best. I am the best." And I was like, "Oh no, she's that's." Oh. Well, since her boob job, right? Well, then I started, the conversation started going in my head, and then I looked up that. She's now one and two. So she got it right after the, what's her name fight? After the Michelle Watterson fight. Well, she beat Michelle Watterson with them. So she has a win, and she has the two losses to Whaley. But we don't Which think, doesn't help the, it, right? It's, it's, a, it's a start. It's a start. Okay. It's a start for it. I'd almost want to, I got to look. Who else we got? I got to just look at my numbers. We'd have Jessica Rose Clark to look at her, and I'd have to go pre, pre, surgery versus post surgery. We have Ashley, Ashley Smith, right? Ashley Evan Smith. We got this Ramona Pascal, who's now going to be part of the mathematical equation going forward. We have Katz and Gano, who had no boob, boob, and now she's post boob. So we have actually a three piece of record that what? she got him taken out. She got him taken out. Yeah. And there's more. They're they're just they're skipping my name right now. But you've 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 seen them. Uh, there's that. She's not in UFC anymore. She did the bare knuckle boxing. Pearl Gonzalez. Yep. 
I mean, we don't have, I don't, well, we might have a before, but her before wasn't in the UFC. So if we just go, she had boob, boob job and she was in the UFC, that kind of skews the data a little bit. Yeah, you know I, mean? I agree. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. But yeah, just something that my brain, my stupid. You're just going to go to the roster and be like, yeah. whoa! Okay. Almost like it'll be the type of thing where once they, I mean, did Paige ever have them in the UFC? Because I don't think she had a good record. Does she have them now? Yeah, Paige? Van Zandt? I don't know. Yeah, you'll have to get it. Oh, um, got some big... We should take, like, always had them now. Who? Misha Tate? No, Misha, Misha Tate might have got them taken out, too. <clears throat> yeah. And no, she didn't have them in Strike Force. She has pre-record, and I, if we're going to count Strike Force, I can give her a pre a pre and post. It's, uh, it's Zufa. That's what I'm saying. But let me let you get out of here because I'm going to have to edit this episode. But it was good seeing you. Likewise. We got some good stuff. Yeah, let me know how the audio is. Do audio things. All right. It was good seeing you. All right. Well, see you later.